Okay, Hunter, it's time. We're here. This is a straight to YouTube video. We, how often have we done this? It feels weird to just record a video with you and not do a stream. We've never done this. No, yeah. never. This is weird. Anyways, this is the official way we should have been doing this the whole time. It's our map analysis for the 2021 prelims map for our tournament. Uh, oh, in, yeah. In the past, we've done it as a podcast episode, which doesn't make any sense. So it's dumb. <laughs> Uh, so we we this is the official naming of the slices, and also uh, we're gonna talk through them. Um, and then after this, we have a draft, uh, a mock draft that we did with some weird bears uh, a, a, and root weird bears and and moderators of I guess more moderators than anything. Anyways, whatever. There's a draft after <laughs> this uh, where we we talk extensively through kind of why we might be making different decisions. So if you want to get a feel for how the draft plays out on this map stay tuned uh after the analysis but let's let's dig in hunter uh i'm i'm in my wide right now uh any notes right off the top of just like the shape of the map the big thing i will point out is this map was based on the 2019 prelims map uh it has mm -hmm. it had as a similar flow of primarily anomalies in equidistance uh, and everybody else having, like, a path to Mechatol. Mechatol is surrounded by planets. Uh, and yeah. everyone has planets to the left. Uh, so you can kind of work towards the neighbor you have speaker priority over. But you can't go park next to their home system and really wreck their shop. So if anything, I would I would say it's more defensive for speaker token aggression uh, in, in that way. That And so the point of this map is supposed to be that it's a little bit easier um, because we get so many more players and some inexperienced players we don't want a map that's really really cutthroat and terrible um to new players we want something that everybody can kind of find some sort of success on now it's hard to evaluate what prophecy of kings does to that idea i think there's a lot of people that will argue that this map is still fairly cutthroat in a lot of ways but um that that's the idea this is supposed to be a pretty easy map to play on and we make it that way because i mean in this case there's going to be like 60 games played on it for the tournament and there's been lots of others played before that so those are those are my first thoughts just looking at the whole map you got anything hunter yeah it's a real like back to basics uh it's interested in in fairness uh especially considering you know just like the new the new world that we're um all living in yeah uh, I think the trickiest thing about it, or the trickiest thing about POK in general, is factoring in uh, these legendary planets. Definitely. Right? Yeah. They, they are they are the thing that really kind of separates this map um, from something you would have gotten uh, in base game. Of course, you also have like the anomalies, the the anomalies with planets in them. Whatever. That's yeah. that's to me, that's not as huge of, of a game shaker as um right. hopes end yeah. and primor that are really like i would say kind of the stars of this map yeah um and there i would say there was a minor attempt to make those two slices a little bit worse considering the legendary planets but i think in the final product that's not what it ended up happening and we, and we found like a different kind of balance but when i was first building it i was doing a lot to try to like completely ruin <laughs> this hope slice uh slice or, and, and things like that but those things didn't shake out it, it still felt like values needed to be relatively good but obviously a legendary planet is always going to be uh quite good and um the only other thing i would say is the the other big factor i have found in trying to build maps with prophecy of kings is i'm no longer as worried about trait distribution in terms of the objectives but now trait distribution for exploration seems to matter quite a bit so when for example and we'll get into some of these talking points but like in this green slice there's no hazardous planets and you have to think about right. what that does to factions that want to explore hazardous planets with mechs or whatever so it really has reshaped how i think about um what makes like for a good slice or what can make for a good slice I, I i think that's what's been fun about it uh in making this map is the idea that like man i can't rely on as much 
known information, A, because we just don't know the game that well, but Prophecy of Kings, there's a lot more faction-dependent information than there was in base game. Base game, it's like, well, yeah, there's some faction choices, but you can generally, if it's a good slice, you're going to do well. But in, in POK, it feels like there are major faction-specific decisions to be made. Yeah, totally. Uh, I I completely agree. I think, or my personal read on, on this, like how I would have explained this, is not so much, uh, I think... Theoretically, it's a reference to 2019. However, it does have a little bit yeah. of uh, 2020 in it with the idea that I feel like the draft is supposed to balance yes. this out a little bit. Yeah. The inequalities of this, um, I, I think a lot of people disagree about the exact order mm -hmm. of good to, to bad slices. Not that there's, I wouldn't say there's, I think there's a slice that might be the worst. Yeah. And then there's, kind of a, a bunch that are several different flavors. Yeah. But in general, I feel like it kind of goes uh, from from purple and then sort of clockwise to yellow, or yeah. counterclockwise, that is, to yellow. Right. Uh, now, some people will say, no, white is the best, or, or purple and then white, whatever. I mean, like the disagreements between these four, and even red, actually, because there are some special cases that we'll talk about with red. Um, I think these five kind of all have... Uh, some flavors that that can make a case for them having a lot of positives yep. and then it's like yellow i don't think is um a bad slice um but it is i think the one with just the least going for it yeah ye yellow um, if you built yellow in a game rules is written that would be a pretty good slice um sure. but it yeah. is it is definitely the worst slice but it doesn't have anything where it's like i can't afford to do anything i can't pull it's like you have you have four six uh, optimal value we'll talk about optimal and actual values here we'll, we'll talk about these numbers in a minute but it, there's nothing wrong with it it's just not as good which means that when someone has a faction that is much better then it is very likely that they will end up in the not as good slice and that ideally balances it out we'll talk about that idea a lot more when we get to yellow but let's let's start digging in to them specifically slice by slice we're going to start up north hunter it is time to present our first name what is the red slice so we're calling it wrigley field where the cubs play okay <laughs> um and if you're asking do i have to say the whole thing yes, yes that's the theme yep. of these okay <laughs> is some of the names are long and that uh, you have to say the whole thing um you can't just call it wrigley field i'll be like wrigley field is that where is that right where who does what there yeah um, that's where the cubs play so obviously it's kind of just a reference uh to uh the wriggles wriggle one wriggle two wriggle three yep. and that's what they're called um right that's yep. correct that's, that's the main thing Absolutely. thematically what is this slice doing well notably uh, on this map is the idea that, yes, anomalies are in equidistance, but two of those anomalies, we did include the planet anomalies, right? So there are yes. two, there are four slices that have a planet worth getting in the anomaly, and red is one of those. So red and yellow share uh, a thing that has to be dealt with, right? This, this is a point of contention sure. between yeah. these two slices, and uh, this being the gravity rift anomaly means there's, there's that <laughs> extra value of once you go in... You might not leave. Uh, it's it is very often Cormand is attacked um, and very rarely abandoned. Uh, it's just attacked and then the next person attacks and moves in and then you try to attack and move. In. It's like it's just hard to you you, you rarely want to risk leaving Cormand um, unless it's for something big. The other thing of note, obviously, is it's got a green skip and it has a yellow skip and it also has, uh, generally speaking, uh, more planets than the rest of the slices. So it has. Uh, right. six planets to most slices uh, five four in the case of these two legendary planets and that's where the real balancing comes in with these legendary planets is there is a certain level of value in prophecy of kings of just sheer number of planets because that means you have more round one explorations which is more opportunity for round one and round two economy boosting Sometimes it's attachments, but sometimes it's like another command counter. It's sometimes it's, you know, some trade goods or whatever. Um, that, but having just sheer raw value more planets is generally a boost in some way. And maybe it's only a temporary boost, but it is some sort of boost. So that's what Red's main contributing factor to its uh, goodness is, is more planets and two tech skips. Outside of that, it's kind of just 
uh, a decently a decently looking spread uh you know you're you're wasting very few resources or influence when you use it you got a lot of like zero one zero two zero one the like these are the only three planets where when you spend it for one thing you're burning the other thing and even that it's pretty cheap uh to, to only lose like the one so so as a four six green yellow i a lot of factions are happy to be here i would say yeah i would say the only the only considerations i have um on just like a generic level is that it's kind of it's I, is it lowest it's tied for lowest uh for resources optimally yeah. which yeah. i mean a lot of people tell you that doesn't matter too much yeah um but think about just think about what slice you're picking as far as the home system because in round two you're gonna have access to your home system plus if we're just talking optimal one resource yeah uh it's, that's your that's your round two. So that yeah. could potentially be a little bit rough, and you should think about you know what that means for whatever faction it is that you're right. playing. Yeah, the big um, argument here is that is this uh, Wrigley Field is a Mechatol slice. You can park next to Mechatol and put some pretty good stuff there. The Alpha, it's worth pointing out too here, is connected to the Alpha asteroid field, uh, and no other Alphas unless you know obviously can, some can be explored. But this is a pretty safe Alpha. Uh, because mm -hmm. these people have to invest in anti-mass, and this one in particular, we'll get to it, but they have a blue skip, so they have even less reason to get anti-mass. It is not especially common for someone to come through the wormhole into loader, which means parking a bunch of stuff here and using that aggressively onto Mechatol is somewhat to your benefit, especially because that's why you need... Those are your only resources, and you have to get them, and it makes a pretty big argument for you have to get Cormund as well. Yeah, I also think... Um... This this slice to me is kind of uh, the one that uh, I think some people don't like it as much as the other slices. I think people would would put it a second to worst. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily feel that way, but I think because I think there's some special considerations with it. To me, it's kind of a good um, underdog slice. There's a couple um, factions I think we could see do surprisingly well yeah. um, in this slice. The really obvious one that I just have to mention is uh, this is a. This is a Sardak delight. Yeah. Uh, essentially, we unlock the commander on round one. We've got <laughs> one, two, yeah. three, four, five planets. Yep. Uh, and and then the fact that having the Wriggles means I can use the commander in really yeah. hot. And you have that equidistant, so the commander can also push into Corman without stuff. moving any planets there. I also think, and this is just me spitballing here, I also think this would be a really fun uh, uh, Mentak slice, yeah. to be honest. Um, now, uh, everyone's dogging on Mentak right now, but obviously, I mean, I'm kind of just feeling like like I want to figure them out because everybody sure. hates them so much. Um, I think you've got the early aggression to uh, with Ambush to push in on uh, Cormund and basically say, this is mine. Yep. Um, you have a green skip, which is hot, and you have a yellow skip, which is also hot. So those are those are, to me, two factions I could come up off the top of my head just to say, yeah. hey, that's that's pretty good underdog stuff. Yeah. Also, though, any faction that likes a uh, uh, yellow skip right. uh, is probably also going to do well here. I'm going to throw out um, Hakan. Hakan is an obvious production biomes and a quantum data hub node skip. And we just talked about you have a round two resource problem. Uh, no, you don't. You're Hakan. <laughs> You're fine. Right. You're going to survive. You're going to make it. Now, Hakan's a hard faction to draft because people don't like how much time it adds to the game. And I think generally people recognize it's pretty good. But this is a killer, killer Hakan slice. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I like that. Um, I, I think that all makes sense. To me, it's, uh, it's almost a little bit. Uh, I would I would be a little squeamish about it. It's good that you start with anti mass so you can clog up this uh, right this this asteroid field here. Uh, but the fact that we've got the wriggles and, and my home system, home I know system, that's true. It's like <laughs> that's, that's tough. That's a lot of planets that I am maybe not going to be able to spread my to infantry defend. out yep. in such a way as to defend all of them. Which I mean I don't know. I think there's an argument that this slice is actually kind of safe. Um, I think if if you subscribe to the idea that yellow is just not very good. Yeah. Maybe most of the time you're going to win the fight for Cormand. I don't know if I have enough like gut data yeah. to say that that makes sense. Um, but the other thing that I feel pretty sure of is that I don't think you're going to get a lot of aggression from Green, at least not early game, just because Green is kind of in a weird spot of if if they don't start with anti mass, they probably don't want to get it yeah. anytime soon. Yeah. So you're kind of shielded over right. here. So yeah. I don't know. We'll see how Red plays out. I think Red could secretly be like. 
the third place yeah uh, uh slice yeah. secretly no and when you say yet. third place you mean amongst once we're done with 60 games it will have the third most wins on it i i, I think it's possible i also yeah. think it's the slice that's going to give us the weirdest outcomes yeah, definitely i agree uh let's move on to slice number two hunter what is the name of our green slice yeah, uh, so we are going to call this one. Uh, this one's really specific, and you got to be. You, don't mess up the pronunciation here. <laughs> this one's called Las Vegas. Yep. Okay. Not. Not Las Vegas. Not, Las no. Vegas. Las Vegas. Because we get there's two of them. You I see feel bad we because we're doing two. So the first two we're showing off are not our best work uh, here in terms of slice names. Uh, you know. Hey, no, I, no, no. These it, these are all winners. <laughs> And and you're gonna love it, and you love all of it. And actually, this one's smarter than it appears. You're yeah, gonna it is. you're thinking right now. Oh, just oh they the just said it because of the Vegas. Um, now we did that with Wrigley Field, and you know what? You got us there. All right, <laughs> but I, I I got no defense for that. But, but what stays in Las Vegas? Yes. What happens know? in Las Vegas what? stays in Las Vegas because <laughs> this is, is. What this stays there happens. What stays That's there what is ve- <laughs> it, it does. <laughs> uh, no, this this slice is kind of on its own. It is one of two slices with no planets and equidistant, so it has no inherent reason to have conflict with either of their neighbors. And this is the richest slice on the map in terms of raw value. So this is a good opportunity to talk about these numbers. We didn't talk about it with red, but that is actual value and optimal yeah. value. And if you haven't yeah. checked out our maps before, I always use these numbers, but we've never always fully explained it. Um, so the actual value is if I added up the the numbers on these planets, right? Two from Aang, two from Akoan, two from Joel, that's nine, right? But the idea is that doesn't tell the whole story. It tells some of the story, and it's important. It's why I include it. I don't only just balance off of optimal values. It's important to balance off of actual values because actual values, especially in POK, planets can be refreshed. They contribute to votes in the status fit. Like, there's a lot of things right. that planets can be done with their raw uh, actual values. But the optimal value is to say, if I spent this planet for the most that I can spend it for, whether it be its resources or its influence, what do I get out of that? And if it's if it's like a 1-1, one, one, let's make sure I round up to getting a command counter is the general rule, right? So if I if 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 I'm at six and then I have a one one, I'm gonna I'm gonna assign that one one to resources. Because I've already got six, I've got I've got my command uh, command counter unlocked in. So that's how we add up these numbers. So as a four eight. This is a pretty good slice. This is this is twelve dollars of value and two skips, and it's a blue skip and a red skip, which I, I feel have gone up quite a lot in value. Um, and it's a really good red skip. The two zero uh, is one of the few uh, red skips that doesn't, you know, it's, it's half of the red skips don't cost you a command counter anymore. So you're getting plenty of command counters from this slice. Technically, if you had a trade good, you could spend both of these planets burn the the resources and spend them for command counters and use vega minor as another command counter that's three command counters per round without leadership and you still have four bucks left over that's a that's about as good as it gets in terms of just numbers on this map yeah it's definitely about as good as it gets as far as the red skip goes yeah <laughs> um i think uh i think this one to me is kind of like um and don't nobody take this personally because i told you not to uh this one's like the boring guy favorite, yeah. in my opinion. Right. This is like a very not spicy, yeah. but solid slice. Right. Um, and I think it's like I think we'll get a lot of people pick the slice that are that are that are here to win, and they got in the middle of the pack um, draft wise. Sure. So they got you know kind of a good middle pick as far as what faction they wanted and. And this slice. I, I, I think, think I think a lot of times you'll see the legendary planet slices, purple and white, get picked first. Yeah. And then this would be third. Yes. Something like that. Yeah, and I think this is a good slice to pick third because a lot of factions can do well in it. The blue skip yeah. means you always have access to gravity drive. So any you don't have to make a blue tech consideration if you want to do uh, Mechatol Rex stuff. Uh, and that those raw numbers are gonna are going to pay off. Also worth noting, three industrial planets means even more opportunity for tech skips to show up. So yeah. uh, you, you can really kind of go all over the place. Now it has no hazardous planets, which means some of those big number gains, the command counters and like getting two extra resources on a planet, you're gonna miss out on that exploration. Um, and you know, we, we just recently did an exploration episode where we sort of said cultural rocks, but industrial is not great. And this is industrial rich. So maybe it's not especially 
awesome, but I think it makes up for it in the fact that a Cohen Jail Ear is the best system in the game in terms of numbers. It's it's ridiculous. That, that, this this planet tile is uh, ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, it, it really breaks the mold as yeah. far as like any other system tile you would have ever seen in Twilight right. Imperium. It's so it's so ridiculous and over the top. Also, you know, to be honest, the more we've talked about this, I know, you know, we, I like Las Vegas, right? But the more I kind of I'm looking at it <laughs> and thinking about the, the name on me and, live <laughs> and how safe it is, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. I think it's kind of, and this is kind of just for me and you, sure. but it feels a little bit more like a Branson, Missouri to me <laughs> than it does. For, for you and me and Vegas. EJ, this is Branson, Missouri, but I'm not, I'm not putting that on the rest of the world to Are have you to, sure? I'm I mean, sure. I am half, I'm half the show Here's and the I think I just said that I think it should be Branson, Missouri. Here's the only reason Even I give a pushback. No one knows what that means. I know. We like, haven't introduced the next slice yet and I feel like the next slice makes it important that this is still called Las Vegas. Mm, okay i mean I'll, I'll i think i think for now we'll call it las vegas but cool people know it's yeah. called uh branson missouri yeah, everyone who's it's paying attention cool. knows that this is branson missouri yeah and i will refer to it as uh viva las branson um <laughs> and, and that's just home just of yakov smirnov <laughs> <laughs> he came to our school one time. <laughs> we've told that story too many times let's okay. go down to our third slice a hunter give me that title of the red slice oh sorry okay. white slice white slice white slice yes um so the white slice uh has has primor yep which uh if if you don't remember off the top of your head this is the the planet that gives you the ability to get two ground forces on any planet yep. every round you just exhaust the, the card um so we decided to call it Girls Night Out. <laughs> oh, bam! Gotcha. Yes, Switch, we subverted your expectations. Exactly. We we are avoiding our common. It feels like every single map we've done, we've had some sort of like the dude shoot or like the yeah. the boys town or whatever, and we realize that's stupid. And also, this is this is like always pumping out more friends. So this is Girls Night Out. Also, you got the disco ball hanging out right here. Yes. Uh, so yes. it's only fitting, and it's it's very important that the disco ball is here because this you are you like going this direction, uh, and because of your infantry surplus, you have pretty decent odds of getting it and holding it while still also holding the rest of your slice. So this is a very good uh, aggressive slice for controlling the equidistant. It's probably I think it has the best argument uh, out of any of the equidistant slices that it can probably get and hold its equidistant, right? Yeah, I think it depends on, uh, there's an interesting dynamic that plays out between between blue and white that I've seen quite a few times yeah. now, where where blue, or sorry, white um, has primor and feels like, you know, the, the ladies are ready for a night out on the town. Mm -hmm. uh, however, just on the other side of Evera in the blue slice, yeah. you kind of have a better production area than primor. It's kind of like the kind of drawback of, uh, Primor because it's a two one and not like a three zero like Hope's End. Yeah. Hope's End is just like the best of both worlds. Um, it's not a great forward dock even if you put one down there. So I feel like it's kind of slow production wise, yeah. which is maybe it depends on what faction we're talking about whether that's actually that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. um, I know like you know if we're talking like somebody that's got a great home system for production anyways, uh, or somebody that like as a way to sidestep that, like we're going to be uh, recording the Nomad episode later and just a little sneak peek of that. I feel like the Nomad, because they start with Sling Ray, they almost never really need to build a forward dock. So they can just like maximize their production with just the single dock in their home system. Yeah, definitely. So if that, that's not a consideration for you, then yeah, this isn't going to be much of a drawback. But I feel like I found a situation where because Primor gives you the infantry, it feels like earlier on White can kind of say, Hey, Evera, that's mine. Yep. However, I feel like blue can catch up eventually when it comes to yeah. uh, to plastic. So I don't know. We'll yeah. see how this plays out a million times. Right, but right. yeah, I think definitely early game, white can kind of, because of the prime war bonus, basically just say like, you know what, this is, however I want this to be split up is how it's going to be split up. Yeah. Uh, they notably too have a good forward dock on Atlas if they if they really wanted to be Mechatol aggressive. Um, and the idea of like using Primor to reinforce Mechatol while also having yeah. a strong forward dock there, this is a and really good Mechatol here, you know. And like, you have six behind you. You can basically free get Mech if you take this first and start moving towards it. You can get the Custodian's token uh, without much trouble. 
Yeah, I actually want to say just as a, a little PSA, because I have played in the blue slice so much, so I have like really specific opinions, I think, on blue uh -huh, and white. Uh -huh. uh, people playing in white, I do feel like are sleeping on the fact that this slice seems clearly designed yeah. to be a great Mechatol slice. Right. Um, I feel like most oftentimes, I feel like the person in the white slice will just kind of be aggressive towards Evera, uh -huh. which is which is fine. And if you can get both Atlas and Evera, that's a lot of value. That rules. Yeah. But if you're sleeping on the fact that this is a Mechatol faction, I feel like you're just making purple, yep. which has kind of similar considerations, all that much better. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the only other thing here is uh, your relationship above you with that gravity rift means, and th this this holds to the idea that the Vegas are kind of out of your way. I mean, the, it, the idea that this is girls night out, but then they rarely go to Las Vegas is funny. Maybe that does. Las Vegas. Maybe Las that is. Vegas. Las, I'm sorry, Las Vegas. <laughs> Or Branson, Missouri. They don't. They don't go to Branson. <laughs> so See, in, in, in games, sense, in games, like... no, no, no. This slice has two names. In games where the girls go to Las Vegas, it's Las Vegas. When the girls don't go up north, it's Branson, Missouri. It's Branson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody's like, oh my god, I'm gonna have my my ladies' night in Branson, Missouri. <laughs> if you if you know anything about Branson, it's not not where you it's not go. a ladies' night yeah. out kind of place. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, the only other things to talk about here, uh, the beta wormhole, which in this situation does have some things that can happen on the opposite side, right? So you have the protected end of the beta wormhole with people that can definitely get through it. You might even go toe-to-toe -to -toe with your, your, mech, uh, your, your mech cousin um, through yeah. Atlas. There, there is a chance of them coming through to that side. I don't see it all the time, but it's, it is certainly possible. Um, so I, I think this is a super, super solid slice. It's another one where the distribution is very, very even. It's a five, six, and like very few wasted dollars in that. Um, the red skip, obviously. This is a red skip rich map. Uh, we, there are three red skips on it. Um, I guess I just really wanted to see people get war suns, and we'll see if that holds true. But like anyone with AI dev and a red skip could, could make it happen. Haven't seen enough of it yet, but you know what? A boy can dream. Uh, let's move on to slice number four, our blue slice. Hunter, what's the name of Old Blue? Blue, okay, so, blue in the South. <laughs> yeah, so this <laughs> uh, so this is our, our southernmost slice. Uh, it's blue. We decided to go with a real just kind of blue collar name to it. Uh, and also, we feel like this one is kind of basic, kind of similar to green, mm -hmm. in that it just kind of has like a kind of standard vibe, nothing too spicy about it. So we decided to call this one Miller High Slice. It's the champagne um, of slices. The champagne of slices. <laughs> uh, Miller High Slice. Um, just kind of a working man slice, right. you know? Yeah. That's 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 the vibe we wanted to go. You you get you get off work, you know, you kick off your dirty boots, you know, <laughs> and you just you have a little ten hour game of Twilight Imperium. Yeah. Yeah. Like you know, you just. That's that's the vibe we want to go for with this one. Hunter talked about the late game potential of Lysus Velnor on uh, uh, being a good aggressive approach to Evera. You you can really build up here. This is an amazing space dock slice, uh, especially if you double dock it. You know that's that's a ton of production value. It's not the best uh, forward dock spot, right? It's not the it's it's yeah. second worst, but it's not. You're not really setting up and protecting Mechatol from here. Not that you couldn't get there, but you know the blue the blue skip isn't doing you any favors round one or even necessarily round. two. Too. It's kind of far out there compared to uh, Las Vegas, where like you can get it and then the next round probably use it. Um, so still have the blue skip. You also have a red skip, but I, I think the value in this slice is a little bit more at home with then late game potential to push out of your slice into, you know, making trouble for everybody else. But I feel like this slice sits here for a while and yeah. then makes action happen. Yeah, and uh, I mean, Lysis Velnor isn't the best uh staging area but a double dock lysis velnor isn't you know isn't the worst thing in the world yeah. it's not the it's not the worst forward uh dock you could have at least uh you know it's 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 this is the main reason why it's so similar to me to um green because lysis velnor which is a a 2-2 two -two and a 2-1 yeah. is like the the crappier worse version <laughs> right. of a cohen joel jr <laughs> Two three two three, yeah. both industrial. Like they, they feel really similar to me. Yep. Um, they're just not, you know, it's just not as, not as great. The but. other thing to note here too is this: this is five planets, but also with an equidistant, and you have a really even spread of planets, right? So, so contrary to your cousin up here in Las Vegas, uh, Miller High Slice has two of each. So, 
you know, your exploration, you can kind of do everything. This is why it's also the, it's, it's a working man's slice. You can get stuff done. You can really dig deep and find anything you really need to. So, so if, if your late game options are like, I got to start digging through exploration decks, you have an ability to do all of them, especially considering all three planets can be found adjacent to your home. So even if you've been pushed back and you're not elsewhere, you can explore all of the planets types that you need to, to, to like get that last relic fragment or get that last attachment. Yeah. And I also just want to point out, you know, like you're you're right next to to Girls Night Out, and we and we know, you know, as much as Miller's marketing might want to make it seem <laughs> that Miller High Life is some sort of boys only beverage, right. uh, I've known I've known a working gal that would be down <laughs> with some Miller High Life. That's one of the weirdest things I've said in it's in the show. <laughs> so, yeah, but there's a there's a reason just, to go in this direction for sure. There's a lot of interaction between these two slices. Yeah. I've, I've just witnessed it. Yeah. So uh, the the other thing of note I will say is this is an awkward slice for command counters. Um, your your one three is is distant from you, and then your other command counter planet is a zero two. So if you don't have a trade good option or like a zero one or a one one in your home system, command counters become really tricky for this slice, which make it that that's another reason to think of this as kind of a slower slice that has to pick it up in the mid game or late game because they just don't they they run out of options quickly and they sort of have to sit here and build up and then push out so so you have well, to you're, focus you're, on your command counter economy here you're, you're saving grace is that lysis is a 2-2 two, two. Yeah. so it's you not can it doesn't convert hurt, it hurt your tummy too much to spend it for the influence versus the resources and considering on you know round two you'll have five in resources yeah. and then four in influence that's not that bad of a start especially considering you know what i was calling out earlier with uh with red basically being kind of uh very resource star yeah. but influence heavy which is fine for most people right but right right yeah um i th this might be my personal favorite slice just in terms of like aesthetic and and what it does in games and kind of its issue with being between the two legendary planet holders it puts them already in a situation of like i have to like overcome what could be really hard to to deal with aggression from either of these people because they have you know they have their stuff that they're leaving behind covered um so let's get into our fifth slice which is purple and we've talked about it a lot already it's got hope's end what what is the name of our uh purple slice yeah so uh hope's end is the the planet that you can exhaust its card to get a mech mm -hmm. so going on that logic we decided to call it mobile slice gundam um because well, because whatever, mind your own business, yeah. you know? No, I think it fits. It. It's not just mechs, but not that people go this strategy very much, but the yellow skip also gives you access to transit diodes, which the idea of transit dioding mechs all around, uh, that's pretty scary. That's a pretty awesome idea. Um, and and the, the, just imagining them flying through space and getting onto other planets is, is pretty juicy to me. Uh, Mobile Slice Gundam, I think, is what most people regard as the best slice hope's end is yeah. just a ridiculously good planet and yeah. i didn't balance against it probably enough but every time i did it felt like it just really had drawbacks um there was a point in time where it only had four planets instead of matching um the five planets of some of the other slices um that that is a point in favor of it over white white did end up with the four planets but i just couldn't make four planets work here in a way that i enjoyed um some things to also note about Hope Send that were, were very intentional is not letting there be a hazardous planet adjacent to home um, because the idea of taking Hope Send first action and then getting a mech and then being able to immediately use that mech to like you know, you put your mech at right. home and then go here and explore it and get a free thing. That was every time I had a version of the map where there was a red here, a hazardous planet here, boy, did they get off to, to a, an amazing start. But we did right. leave you one out here. So if, if, if you can like warfare it or, or something else, or if you can get an early gravity drive or something, I don't know. But it's it's more often you use your mechs round two to do some work on Saculag or exploring Hope's End itself. So um, right. hopefully you don't see Purple get off to too fast of a crazy mech start. But it's certainly, it can happen. But I think this is the big, this slice is the big reason you run blocker on certain factions during the draft more than mm -hmm. anything yeah also like i mean it's it's so it's so easy to throw out recommendations for factions for this slice yeah. and i think it would cover basically 
Uh, oh, I don't know. Any faction yeah. <laughs> that has a mech that you like yep. is going to do very well here. Yeah. I don't even really feel the need to list it. Although I will say NRA, those mechs are annoying. Has anybody ever said that before? <laughs> I am annoyed by them. Yeah, you should not let good fact. I mean, this being the best slice means good, good factions really should not make it here. We say good. That's a loaded term. There's so many good factions, but like the best factions in the game should not end up here because no. it's probably the slice someone is picking first, and that means they're being left with the the remaining factions to choose from. And if you're doing the draft, you know, in a in the way we're seeing most people do the draft, that means the last few factions are not especially amazing. But that's not always true. Yeah, I actually want to throw out just a special just thing to to Kraken and anybody that might be thinking of running the draft the way Kraken has done it. <laughs> right. I don't feel like this. I think this slice breaks that way of yeah. thinking because if you're going to let, so, so just to explain what I'm saying, actually. Um, so Kraken in his drafts has convinced um, everyone at the table to just draft all the best factions, right. which I actually love that, that someone does that. Yeah. However, I just want to say that, if you give, if you do six of the best factions, then that means somebody can just pick purple and then have one of the best factions, yeah. even if it's the sixth worst. Yeah, <laughs> with Hope's End, is probably going to be yeah. a bit much, right. to be honest. Yeah. So I feel like I don't know. I I I, rec I think that what we've gotten to here with this map is a medium between the 2019 prelim map yeah. and the 2020 prelim map. Uh, as far as the logics of, you know, it being balanced, not too spicy, yep. but with a little bit of logic of like, okay, we need to make sure we're being mindful of the order yep. of selection here right. so that we don't let someone get the best slice and also the best faction. Yeah. Uh, similar to Miller High Slice, this one has a uh, has a very minor influence problem. Your only influence system is protected. That's very nice to have all your influence just kind of back here behind the supernova, behind your hopes end. Like th this can just be yours all game in a lot of situations, but it lacks you know the rounded six number. So you need to be using trade goods or like maybe you're a faction with again a single influence that's easy to use. Um, otherwise, your command counters you you end up with a little bit of difficulty and you almost have no other options like if you're just using your planets in your slice you would have to use sacculag to get a second command counter and, and in that case you're probably just not so um ideally there's a little bit of a command counter shortage in this slice but you make up for it with just like sh raw economic gains from getting free mechs yeah i will say that i have seen uh brian play in the yellow uh slice and the death piper play in purple slice um, and Brian was playing as Cabal, and uh, <laughs> he just went for Case and Raren right away. Oh, man, uh, and and it was it was not very nice. But I do understand. Yeah. I, I feel like Brian has just kind of a pattern of like I like to try and exploit my neighbors right. for um, support. Well, and if there if there is um, a slice that you're afraid of too, that you yeah. need to put that early heat on, it makes sense to take away all of their command counters so they have very few ways to respond to you especially as cabal i mean that's a whole other problem in itself yeah but and, really and any she... faction yellow has an incentive to put put the aggression on early before they already have four mechs out yeah and uh she was playing as joel nar yeah. in the purple slice so it was very much like oh, uh -oh, oh boy. i'm not ready for this yet yeah yeah. uh the other thing of note with purple is this is the second of two non planet equidistant systems now one of them is nice and protected it's that supernova uh, and the other is fairly protected because that alpha wormhole generally doesn't see a lot of use because you got to get anti-mass to do it so um yeah i would call this a e it's fairly defensive even though it's got a lot for other people to want to attack you over you end up with defenses by like round three being really solid and there's just not that many avenues to get into your stuff so there, there's definitely a reason for blue and yellow to talk to each other and be like hey we need to uh deal with our 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 mechanized our our, our gundam friend over here yeah it's just hard for it's i again yeah. uh, too much too much blue knowledge for me it's hard for blue to really not focus on white. not focus on white. Yeah. So I don't know. It it, it kind of like I feel like it's a lot for to expect uh, 
blue to do that much. Yep. So I don't know. Like this is more I, defensive I say- for this, and this is offensive for like these two match. You meet up here yeah. more than you meet up anywhere else with with this neighbor. Yeah, I, I would say the more and more I'm analyzing the map, I feel like blue is the one that most, I mean, blue is sandwiched between two very good slices yeah. that get going really fast. Right. So I, I feel like it is kind of a harder slice to play, even though it is um, very good in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just because the, you know, your neighbors are having a better start than you. Um, yeah. And and purple, this is probably the best, I mean, this is the best start you could hope for, unless you're mech just doesn't do anything yeah. interesting which... and that would just be weird that you end up that but it's it's certainly possible there's there are drafts where there aren't more than six factions in the pool if if the people just like don't let you get a second faction in there you might not mm-hmm. get to pick your faction uh if, if you're the last pick or whatever so it's certainly possible for weird things to happen to purple let's yeah. round things off let's get up here to our yellow slice uh we've been sort of dogging on it already but we'll now start to uh, justify that that vitriol that yellow gets hunter what is the name of our yellow slice so it's called um (laughs) it's called uh down with the sliceness Um, (laughs) i hate yes it's the slice name is as bad as the slice basically (laughs) (laughs) um yeah so so the this slice to me is a challenge. Yes. It is it is a gauntlet thrown. Um it is not uh I, I do not think it is horrible. I think there are some people out there being really I mean if we give them six slices and they're gonna they're it's, gonna find the worst one and then they're gonna say it's the horror, right. it's so awful. Right. It happens every time. Yeah. There's you, you can't make six perfectly yep. even ones. So there's always gonna be some sort and especially now, I mean we got you know, Dane didn't give us six legendary planets. planets. Special, yeah. yeah, six legendary planets. We didn't get that. So, like, what, are we just supposed to not have them? I mean, I guess some people would say, like, you should put them in the equidistance. Like, well, I don't know. That's a good idea, actually. If you want to come do this, like, anyways. <laughs> Maybe that's uh, what the semis idea is. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Um, but, yeah, so the reason I called it down with the sliceness is uh, just really so I could, so we could do the, ooh, <laughs> thing. But also, just because, like, I think you gotta be, you gotta get kind of, you gotta be kind of like, you gotta get into kind of a new metal like way of thinking, a kind of punk. Not really amp yourself up. (laughs) Yeah, you gotta kind of insane clown posse this this slice. You know what I mean? You gotta like kind of like you gotta put on weird make. You gotta be you know put on your corn mask or whatever. I wanna I wanna push back uh, against the community. I wanna point out if you had built this map. If this, if you'd built this slice on a rules as written build, this was just what you had in your hand, and you built it this way. This is a pretty good slice. It's a four uh-huh. six, which is like that's two guaranteed command counters. That's four resources on top of any trade goods you get. That's as good as any other slice on this map. I mean, it's I'm th- not as good as any other, but I mean, like, y- there's not that much more value to be had in a pretty decent slice. So the idea that that uh, down with the sliceness is terrible is only by comparison to all of these other slices that are way too good rich and powerful slices this is a rich map um and this is just the least rich slice which has value in a draft where there is a player often incentivized to put in a powerhouse faction if they get it in their hand if our first player in the draft gets something like nra or titans or sar they're going to get that fact. They're going to pick that faction first and then you all get to make sure they end up in this slice where they don't have yeah. any other significant advantages. They can still survive. They don't have a major drawback, but their their faction will be doing the heavy lifting as opposed to the slice doing the heavy lifting. Yeah. Um and I I mean I think really it just comes down to like it's 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 not it's kind of just like tied for bottom as far as like like value yeah. but also like having the bad sl- side yeah. of the beta um there's no there's oh. no great forward dock there's no planet with three resources it's all uh-huh. twos uh and adjacent to mechatol is rough i mean it's a zero two that's that's a hard yeah. planet to hold that's very very hard um but it's it's efficient to spend right your two your two 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 ones are your four resources and then it's like when you use all three of these planets for command counters, you only lose out on one resource, which is pretty good. But it relies on the fact that you have all three 
uh, systems, which a lot of other slices do not rely on you holding your entire slice, right? A good, sl an amazing slice is one where you hold some of it and still do very, very well. If someone else, you know, attacked your mechatol adjacent planet, you're going to be okay. This slice will struggle if they, if they start taking some heat. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, it's, it's the, it's the type of slice that, that counterbalances well with, with any, really awesome faction yeah. I, I would hate to see a, a a real not great faction stuck in this because i just feel like they're gonna have kind of a slow game yeah. but you know if god forbid sar or you know if cabal makes it in right. like this is this is not a bad cabal. i mean i don't know uh, is there a bad cabal no. uh probably not spot? i don't know this is I a ridiculously guess. good cabal slice because they don't even care the, their forward dock on vorhal still rules it, and yeah so that's you're true just it like, past the problem i mean yeah. if your draft let cabal through you you earned your loss <laughs> basically <laughs> well that's the thing is what's going to happen is sometimes the person that that picks first is going to draw cabal yep and they're four, and, and they're, they're going to be like, I get to play as Cabal do this. Yep, in sure. likely yellow. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. And they're going to be um, fine. And you, everyone else has to find a way to uh, work against that very heavily. So It's so disgusting, too, because, well, so, like, I've, I've seen it before. I, to I told you I saw Brian play it, and Brian kind of just did, Shirk you know, meta. some yeah. goof. He, yeah, he, he, did, he did his thing, and that's fine. Uh, and, and it's great, by the way. I'm not, I'm, I'm not down talking to Brian. You're great. Um, but some of the just kind of basic stuff as Cabal is, like, you know, I could go over to Cormand, and now Cormand is actually pretty cool. Yeah, Cormand is uh, really great all of a sudden, and right. I don't have any drawbacks for that. And also, hey, Red, what's going on, buddy? <laughs> turns out I'm I inside your slice. <laughs> yeah, turns out you get you have four planets here you need to protect, <laughs> bud. Yeah, so, so I I think I think uh, Brian in that game was like, oh, I'm going to harass Purple, which is I think the nice thing to do for the for Tip. the table, yeah, right? Definitely. But I think if Cabal is sitting in yellow, whoever's sitting in red, you just go eat them. <laughs> uh, I believe, though, in, in that game, I think Nine of Spades was sitting in red and they were playing as uh, Sardagnor, which, of course, rules rock and roll. <laughs> um, and maybe I think Sardagnor is probably a little more. I probably wouldn't pick Sardagnor to try and harass early with that, yeah. especially if they get the commander yep. right away, which is pretty cool. So, so that's it. That is the 2021 Patreon tournament prelims map. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to do a mock draft in just a second with some players, but Hunter, any final notes, any, any last words on this map? Uh, we're going to see a lot of games on it. And I'm, I'm curious to see how the stats come out. Do you have any predictions for, for what will be the winningest slice, the losingest slice, all of that? Um, I think purple and white will be neck and neck. I'm not going to disagree with the consensus too much, yeah. um, but I've sort of already said that I think, right. Uh, red is a a secret a, a secret goodin yeah um and that i think we'll see uh interesting factions end up there kind of lower mid tier maybe even like not good bottom of bottom of the barrel factions that are able to make it work in red yeah. i think if if you end up with a real bad faction in yellow i don't i don't i don't see it working out for you which which i now throw as a gauntlet if you want to prove yeah. that you're really down with the sliceness <laughs> ooh, ah, then, then pick, you know, like Arborek or whatever. Oh my gosh. Mentac and play put that out there. Yellow. <laughs> no, do it. Do it. Sure. Prove me wrong. Yeah. Prove me wrong, you coward. Come on. <laughs> Come on, coward. Do it. All right. Do well, it. let's jump do over do 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 to do do our do mock do draft. Do 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 all right, it is now time for us to do a mock draft, but we want to show you what it looks like from when you load up the game. So here's all the steps you need to get yourself into a official tournament game of Space Cats Peace Turtles Patreon tournament. So you you load the, the game and you have the setup options. We are playing with the Prophecy of Kings expansion and we are also playing with Codex 1. Uh, we also like to load in all the player tools uh, because those are handy. So we click setup, let everything kick off. Uh, it is going to be important to deal our objectives after they all shuffle. And we will build our map. We'll come over here. We've got the map key. Kablamo build. All right. So now we're set up with our map, with POK, everything else. The, the last step is to come over here to the tools and helpers and grab the Space Cats Peace Turtles 2021 draft tool. We pull that out. We'll drag it just kind of over here. There's nowhere good for it. It's a giant placard. Uh, but from here, we're kind of directing all of our attention to, to this part of the table. Uh, 
the there's a handful of buttons here on the left so you'll be clicking those as we go through uh, the order and everything so the first step is to randomize our turn order and place our slice tokens so here we go uh, the other thing that this does is places a little placard in your play area with your name on it um, and later on in the draft when you're actually making your selections this is where you will put your stuff so that then the rest of the coding can read like what everybody has and, and a lot of stuff works well. So our turn order has been set. Uh, I'm here. I'm first up. Hunter is second. That's a funny thing to happen. Uh, Space uh -huh. Lawyer is third. Root is fourth. Right. Bot Bot is fifth. And Absol is sixth. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so the, the next step that we do is to click this number two button to deal four factions to each player. We all get four factions now. The third step doesn't require a button, but it's that we will all simultaneously place one faction into the pool. Uh, so we're gonna kind of line them up with our faction or our, our current slice color. So everyone will pull, a, will flip a card in their hand, pull it out, set it on the board, and then we will flip them all simultaneously. And here we go. Three, two, whoops, hang on. I was thinking backwards. Uh, yep, <laughs> I was thinking, all right, now. Three, two, one, go. I almost put the thing I wanted to ban into the pool. All right, so we've got Mahakt, Winu, Barony, Ghost, Hakan, and Nomad. This is a scary kind of middle of the pack-ish draft. Pretty good, except for Winu's kind of funny. Uh, okay, the next step is a similar thing, but this time it's bans, factions we do not want in this game. We're going to drag and drop all of those. And then um, at the same time, we will all reveal. So all of this so far has been secret information. And around, here we go, three, two, one, flip. All right, we got rid of Asar, we got rid of Jolnar, Cabal, NRA, Mentak, and L1, Z1, X. So the next step is nobody has to pull anything from their hands because we have a fancy button that moves all 12 of the factions into limbo. So these are off the table, but these 12 are now our options uh, for, for doing everything else. So now I'm going to set the turn order uh, for nominating and or seconding. I'm first up. All I'm allowed to do is nominate, uh, which means I don't have any control of actually getting anything into the draft. This draft has been pretty middle of the pack, so uh, you know I'm not interested in doing something like Titans. Uh, I don't want to see some major super... Well, I mean, I do, but <laughs> I know that nobody else is going to do it. So I want, I want to put something in that's pretty good that might also have a ch chance for me to pick. Although, that being said, me personally, I'm already... Yeah, I feel good about all these choices. I'm already now. kind of eyeing Winu, honestly. I, I'm, I, I am partial to Winu, and I think Winu has some pretty ridiculous late-game superpowers. So, if anything, I just want to uh, put in something that maybe is a bit of a nothing burger, um, because I, I don't want anything to be improved on this faction pool, necessarily. So... Um, and I also don't want to put in things that are going to block my ability. So, like, I'm kind of avoiding Excha. Um, I'm probably avoiding Nalu. Uh, and then I'm avoiding Titans and Soul. I think I'm going to go with Empyrean. I'm not very threatened by Empyrean. Well, so you just nominate it. Sorry, yep, I put right, it in the wrong yeah. thing. So it goes into our nomination. So uh, Hunt, or Hunter's now either allowed to second Empyrean or nominate something new. Yeah, so I just want to clarify. I actually had just like a bonkers hand, and and I felt like when it was the the least like the least bad thing sure. I could put in, so, <laughs> um, it wasn't some sort of strategic decision. So I, um, I like all of these. I realize I probably won't get Winu, but uh, but Winu is probably the best. But I also feel like because it's so middle of the road i don't really care about nominating anything good kind of like matt was saying and i can i can and do love to play sardak so my move is to nominate sardak um root any thoughts where we want to pick in put in here man yeah this is a this is kind of a weird draft because like i don't i don't know how do we deal with winu's late game i guess mm -hmm. we hope that Mahat can pull some stuff off. Can, yeah, can, you know, just to, this is not something I would say in a game stuff. if I'm trying to be close to the chest and I know I want to get Winu. But the things I'm most afraid of are like Asarl, uh with just crazy action card ability to kind of like thwart my plans, um, and I guess sort of Muat because um, if Muat gets like some pretty crazy War Suns online and and you know can nuke one of my systems. There's a lot of things that a, that a Muat can do to ruin my game. Um, those those are the two most win slay e factions I, I see on the table. 
Yeah, so um, the trick is the trick is finding something that can deal with Windu that isn't too powerful to have to be dealt with as well. Himself, you know? yeah. <laughs> um, so, so what what I'm thinking, um, there are also a lot of factions that have a lot of commodities. Like we have four, four, and six in here. Yeah. And uh, in our position route, I think we're good with another four commodity faction in there to be able to take part in the eco game here. Because Hakan will be in yeah. the game for sure. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is Muad or Sol here. I agree with that, especially Muad. I think Muad Muad might be a soft counter to win it a little bit. I've been looking at Muad too. Yeah. Then let's go forward and I nominate Muad, so we get a four commodity faction into pick. Okay. Yeah. So I now think... the back half, we have to be sweet talked into seconding some of those nominations. <laughs> yeah, all three of you could right. just second everything that's up on the table, or Root here could nominate one more thing, and then Botbot and Absol have four to choose from to second two of them, or just not go yeah. for anything. I don't know. The only thing yeah, I think so... should be seconded is Muat. That's all. Uh, besides that, I don't care. Yeah, so at this point, I kind of feel like Winu, Hakan, Nomad are going to be the first three faction picks, leaving just Ghost, Barony, and Mahakt right now. And I don't want to play either any of those into the other three in particular. But I'm also not sure that I particularly want to play any of the nominated factions. So this is a tough spot. Not seeing anything that I actually want to play. <laughs> but I guess I could be wrong in terms of what gets picked first. Um, I'm afraid that if I like second Muwat, I'm going to be in a position where I have to play Muwat and I don't want to play Muwat. I think. I think I'm gonna second the Sardak. Ooh, I was just I'm, about I'm doing to say. that. I, I'm doing that because I think it's gonna it, Hunter is gonna take that pick, which leaves me one of the the big three that I mentioned mm -hmm. for me to play. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, so if I look at the original uh, pool, I don't want to play Creus and I don't want to play Nomad, but I think everything else I'd be fine playing. So I'm not sure i need to i kind of regret putting hakan in there in fifth pick that was kind of a dumb move by the way um i don't think nominating a new one would make sense unless absol do you have something that you're eyeing that you want to get into the pool that's not even nominated yet because i'm uh, not in love with the other I'd three the only thing I'd be really looking at is uh, Nalu, but I seriously doubt you'd be wanting to put that in, so. Yeah, Nalu and POK is not, I don't know, it's still good. It's not a powerhouse, I think. Uh, but that, that zero token in a tournament is pretty <laughs> Yeah, the speed of POK doesn't definitely uh, makes that a great point. I'm also afraid if I second Muat, then I'm then I'm going to be stuck with Muat, which I, I'm just not a big Muat fan. But they can I mean, be I really can, good. I, I can play Muat. I would play Muat. So I mean, somebody's going to play Muat. If if you don't second Muat, I'm probably going to just because of the aforementioned. We need a potential Winu deterrent. So. Yeah. I'll just do that since it sounds like there's, um, viability. So this puts Absol in the awkward position of either getting to second Empyrean or basically doing nothing because nominating another <laughs> faction is useless at this point. But yeah. yeah, basically I have very limited options as being the last place pick. Um, so I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to uh, second the Empyrean. Okay. So now yeah, uh, a... we are... Oh, go or... ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I think I think that that's a good idea in the last place. Getting more factions in is always good when you're last pick. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of kind of agent of chaosy almost just to just to see if it throws people off. Okay. So we've the the turn order has come back around to me. It is now time for selections. Uh, so I either need to pick a faction or I need to pick a 
uh, slice. Um, and this whole draft has been completely centered around the notion that Winu is going to get trashed on. And I see ghosts as someone who might come and move Mechatol very far away from me, <laughs> which would be a pretty big thorn in my side. Uh, and obviously, we've been talking a lot about how much of a threat Muat is. Obviously, Mahawk is always a threat uh, in terms of wind slaying. And I, th I think Nomad and technically Sardak could be a problem. So now I'm looking at Winu as a thing that's going to just get way too much heat at this table, um, and it's something that, that scares me quite a bit. Um, but every other faction, in terms of its own viability, isn't that much to write home about for me, so I'm almost leaning that I just want to get my hands on the best slice that I can, accepting that I will be last to pick a faction, but because we went with a very faction-rich draft, we ended up with nine, um, I'll have four factions to choose from. I, I will I will not be left absolute garbage. So I feel pretty safe picking a, a slice that I really, really like um, right off the top. So then it really becomes what four factions do I think will be left over and what kind of skips, generally speaking, apply to all of those factions. Um, I, I think a blue skip is kind of the most useful because it's going to open up my opportunities to get to like fleet logistics and light wave no matter what my my start is um but both of the slices with blue skips are also red skips which is a funny uh factor in this map it's it is two blue red uh slices so the only other way to get some blue skips is like a lot of industrial planets more or less which no slice has a ton except for the one that's already a blue red so i i just want the most general value I am pretty keen on either Hope's End Slice or uh, Green over here. So I'm going to go... I'm going to go with Green. Green gives me a lot of options. I, that's probably, I don't know if that's actually a good pick or not, but I'm, I, I just want to stick with it. So I'm going Green first. Okay. Notably, notably, Winu. we are recording this draft. I'm, I've just now realized before Hunter and I have done a map analysis and named <laughs> all of these slices. So, this is a <laughs> this this is a funny uh, place in time. So Hunter does go Winu. He's willing to take the heat. I'm I'm role playing as a guy who believes in himself. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to believe in yourself, Hunter. <laughs> right. Um. So. Uh, looking at my spot, um, if I pick a slice, three people will pick factions before me. So three will be gone. What will be probably be Hakan, Nomad, and hmm, Mahakt, I guess, depending. Maybe Bernie, if some, some Bernie guys in here. <laughs> um, so that would leave me with ghosts. Sardak, Muad, Empyrean. Not that great factions. Um, I go with Hakan because you can Hakan play Hakan in every. Yeah, that was that was map. my second thought. If I hadn't picked the green slice, I was going to take Hakan. Remove the heat, but still have a really solid faction that can kind of go anywhere. Cool, 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 cool. Um. Yeah, I feel like in this spot I'm going to go with a slice because there is a slice available that I like a lot and several factions that I think will do fine there that I'm okay playing. So I'm going to pick the purple slice. Mm -hmm. Good choice, Root. It's my most beloved slice in the map. <laughs> Darn maybe, it. maybe I should not put that out there before I go in my prelims game. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm in a similar situation to Alec in that I'm there's plenty of factions left and I kind of like that white slice got good influence I might need somebody fighty to hold on to my good planets but I think with the white slice being available I think that's what I what I'm gonna do and sit back and wait Darn it. <laughs> 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 but 
both of my slice picks just disappeared right before my choice. <laughs> <laughs> the travails of being last in the order. Mm -hmm. Do you get that boon of being able to pick a faction and slice? Yeah, you get a you get to combo yeah, up do, better I than anybody up. else. Okay, so wait, whose turn is it? It's Absol. Oh yeah, Bot Bot, oh, okay. will you hit that pass turn button? Oh yeah. I'm just gonna think yeah, out loud a little bit too, oh, Absol, if you if you don't mind. I, I'm I'm looking at like I, I know that I like uh blue and red quite a bit and if i'm looking at blue we talked about the blue skip and the red skip and i mean barony blue and red skip is pretty choice ghosts blue and red skip is pretty choice sardak nor blue and red skip is pretty choice um maybe um, no unfortunately man? i'm not all that i don't gel very well with those the strategies yeah. of those yeah. factions right so i have to play to what i can play For well sure. not what act technically works I mean, going Muad with Gravity Drive and War Suns too <laughs> in a blue red skip. <laughs> True, blue red from Muad is pretty cool. Yep, and we don't have anyone playing it yet, and we do have that Winu in there. Yep. I want to see a five move War Sun with Imperium's Aether Stream ability. The other <laughs> thing that's funny right now is if you take blue, currently you already know who your two neighbors are. You don't know the faction, but you know that your neighbors are bot bot and uh uh Me. At root yeah so like if you're if if you're nervous about hunters win you know it's like right now we kind of want muat to maybe maybe be neighbors with winu i don't know if that's actually what we're going for but there's an argument to if you're not taking muat to and you intend to take blue like don't you know don't don't end up putting muat in blue basically because that might be more difficult to get it where it needs to at least as a group, what we've talked about needing Muat for. Yeah, but no one will play Muat in red, right? Yeah. Uh, yellow skip? I don't know. At least I would not. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need a yellow skip when you can just research AI. AI. Yeah. yeah. See, I was really wanting to play Mahakt, mm. but... I think I will go with Muat. Okay, and then your nice. slice. Um, so also here is where we can select our last button. We're now in a snake draft order. Um, we've been doing it in standard order, and when I click this number seven button, it flips the order in which our pass turn button will send us. So I'll click this now. It's still Absol's turn, but we're in reverse order. Uh, so when Absol passes the turn after picking her slice, it'll go straight to Bot Bot. Okay. I, like I think I, the idea of that blue red skip. Yeah. Seems pretty yeah. good. Okay. Bot Bot is in the white slice. Lots of factions on the table. I've got Muat to my left, and I've got somebody to my right. I know it's. Winu or Hakan. Uh, somebody took the green slice. That is Matt. Oh, yeah, me. So Sorry, I'm there. Yeah. You're in the green red slice. Red and yellow are left. That's what's left. Sorry. I'm looking at it over here. Um, no matter what, you'll be sitting next to me. I'm a little bit worried about having Watt to my left. So I want something that's going to be making us friendly mm -hmm. as much as possible. Um, oof. I'm thrilled how seriously you're all taking this, because then we're not playing a game at all. <laughs> oh, wait, we're not playing this game? <laughs> Matt, I cleared my entire deck. Oh, no! <laughs> um, I kind of like Barony, actually, in the white slice. I got that red skip. Mm -hmm. Although, well, the only problem is I have to use that red skip uh, for influence or i'd rather use it for influence so i think yeah. i'm actually going to take nomad oh, so yeah i like that that's really scary <laughs> Ugh. 
you just you had to do it to me, mm. man. I almost got there. I was almost yep. living the dream. Yeah. <laughs> Purple <sighs> mech well, mech filled nomad. If anything, that's side. that's more. We should have been thinking of that and like, hey, man, you definitely can't let nomad end up over here, or we we can just it's, call it. <laughs> you just you just hate it because it's my favorite faction, and you don't want me to have fun. That's all. I know. I get it. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun. I understand. Um, man, I was I was honestly really counting on getting that. Now I'm not sure what to play. I know I want something with strong mechs, right? God hopes end. Want that to be useful. Mm -hmm. uh, um, kind of feeling like Empyrean is the right choice, to be honest. I Empyrean is interesting. I was thinking Mahawk is interesting. That yellow skip means you can skip the transit, and then you have transit diodable Mahawked mechs. Which is pretty too. ridiculous. Uh, um, the problem with the problem with Empyrean is that you have to get into the asteroid field to get access to that right, um, that alpha, and it's going to be difficult to be neighbors with everybody from there. I think. I mean, I also like um, Sardak there because uh, their mechs are great. The yellow mm -hmm. skip gives you uh, oh, extra yeah. room too. Um, and the yellow skip also gives you dock too, and you can spread even more infantry wow. around True. if you're going with the commander. So I think Sardak is great in, in purple. I like how much we're all trying to so, talk root out of Empyrean, even though it's like, oh man, if he picks Empyrean, <laughs> I would feel so less of a threat. Here's my my thoughts. Yeah. A, I, Sardak is my least favorite faction in this game. Right. I will not play them. I They're... Well, if, if they were my only to... choice, I would quit. <laughs> sitting, <laughs> sitting next to Muat is not making it more attractive either. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and the other, yeah, the other thing is Empyrean makes it super easy to make friends with my neighbors, mm -hmm. right? Um, which might be a big deal. And, yeah, and uh, their mechs are pretty powerful. Pretty, really great. Yeah, that's true. Um, um, and if the worst, and that yellow happens, skip still not... also gets you uh, Dreadnought too, really easily. Yeah. Yeah, and, and if the worst thing about it is that I have to research anti-mass deflectors mm -hmm. to get into that asteroid field, I feel like that's a price I can pay. Mm -hmm. um, the only consideration is that Ghost and Mahawked are great wind-slaying factions. Uh, um, which um, could also be really important. Here's your friendly Hakan player speaking. I think we can print a lot of money if you take Empyrean with your uh, promissory note and my agent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, no. What have we wrought? <laughs> yeah, this is a tough choice because, like, if I take Empyrean, do I give that promissory note to Hakan or to Muat? Mm -hmm. uh, we can also do a three way thing here. Um, with um, I'm using my agent to refresh the person you're giving your promissory to, and then we share the profit. That works. Because we because then in, in I think trade will be picked in this game very often, so we can refresh Muad two times, once with trade and a second time with my agent, and then then we share profit from the plus one plus one you get in two times a turn. Yeah, yeah, no, that sounds great, and it sounds really complicated, and I'm really glad we're not playing this game now. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it works. I did the same thing with uh, Mick Mac Moose and Def Piper in one of our games. Um, I was Empyrean, Mick Mac was Extra, and Hakan was played by Def Piper. It, it works really great. I think I would take Ghosts if I had a planet with... A wormhole in my slice, but right. I don't. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna play Empyrean. Okay, I think that's the right. Oh, so space layer. We have Hakan, and he has to yeah. choose red or yellow. Um, I was pretty happy it, uh, the moment I saw that I will have either red or blue available yeah. for Hakan because in blue I would go the War Sun Hakan thing with the hero with the red skip for sure. Uh, and now I'm going to red because I have a red, a yellow, and a and a green skip, so I can get QDN and biomes probably. Terrifying. Um, <laughs> and in in this game with those factions with the four, um, yeah, four commodities, four commodities, four commodities, and the uh, faction promise or note, this is really great. So there's no no thinking going red, and also it's good to send um, Winu to the worst slice in my right. mind on this map, which is yellow. Yeah. And sandwiched between the two most peaceful factions. 
Um, yeah, you, you never saw pl me playing Hakan, right? <laughs> All right, so Space Lawyer, you can pass that turn. Hunter, we already know, he gets forced into the yellow slice. So it comes back to me, and I do have four factions left that I know I have to play in green. So if I'm looking at it, you know, I've got I've got that blue and that red skip, um, and that really, I mean, really any of these three, that does pretty well for. Uh, Hakan, next door to me. Not that I need to be next door, but the, the being a part of of these trade deliberations now s starts to feel really important to me um and you know a quick a quick dimensional splicer um blue skips to kind of dance around all sorts of stuff feels pretty good um it also lets me do some fancy business uh, I, I i'm inclined to want ghosts for the exact reason i chose not to take winu which is my fear of mechatol being pulled very far away from the Winu, so if, if Winu's over here, you know, if I put Mechatol over here or something, um, I might be able to do some very important work for myself. So I, I think I'm gonna go with Ghosts here. Nice. So we have our draft. Uh, the last step then is, uh, it does quite a lot, so just prepare, prepare your, <laughs> your screen for all the things that happen when you click this eighth button. It's going to, now that we have slices and everything chosen the tool knows to reset all of us so a bunch of things happen all at once and you're going to want to be uh, aware of them you're going to move into a new slice it's going to choose the speaker for you and it's going to start the timer the eight hour timer starts the second we hit that button which means immediately after that button sets we're going to want to do all the other stuff basically as quickly as we as we can uh, so a, a big thing is uh, if you've loaded in all the tools you might want to get them out of the way of your faction board because you're going to want to immediately unpack your faction board uh, once once this stuff starts popping off. Um, the other thing is you will then, as soon as everyone is unpacked, you're going to deal two, uh, two secret objectives to everybody because that's the first step of the actual game. We'll deal the two secret objectives, everybody will return one, and then we will reveal the first two public objectives and the game truly, truly begins. So uh, I'm going to click this button and we're going to let all of that kind of stuff take place. So we all switch seats. It's happening. It kind of lags for a second. I've popped into the correct seat now. Uh, the speaker token was randomly assigned to Absol, so Absol would be first up. Uh, we everything's still doing its work here. It takes it takes a minute. I would not start dealing secret objectives until all this other business kind of finishes up because it's it's just a lot going on. So much action. Hmm. It's. Oh, it's it's everybody else has to unpack. That's the problem. So yep. Yeah, so you have you do have to manually unpack yourself. So green, white, and blue. If you hit that unpack button on the far right, I'm green. I did it now. Um, oh man, ghosts. Good good lesson I just learned here is where the ghost tile ends up. Um, so don't put stuff in the way of that if you know you're gonna be ghosts. Uh, okay, so we all have our stuff. We get to this already shuffled, but I like to give it an extra, and uh, you can designate one person to deal. Two to all, one, two, and we'll return one. Uh, and just to finish up this video, I'll everyone else would actually need to have already finished them, but we'll reveal the next two. It is control four planets that have the same trait and control two planet attachments. And from here, we would kick it off with Absol picking their strategy card. And that's the draft.